Hey guys, as you can see, I'm in my car again, and I'm back with the X3000, the Sony X3000. Last week I did a video, and I basically had three action cameras in this position. The GoPro Hero 7 Black, the X3000, and the older X1000V, also from Sony. Um, so I did a comparison video with that. Um, one of the reasons was to show you the cameras, but another reason was to show me. I wanted to know what those action cameras were like, what the quality was like, what the audio quality was like. So thanks for all the comments about that, guys. Um, it was good hearing your feedback with that. Um, I think most of you agreed with what I said in that, uh, you know, the GoPro Hero 7 Black and this Sony X3000 had the best footage, but the best audio was between the X3000 and X1000. Uh, Evo left an interesting comment saying that he thought the X1000 was, was better than this one. Um, because it, you know, just you know, sounded more realistic with the background sounds and stuff like that. So quite interesting to hear about it. Um, but I think overall, get on this road. Overall, um, I think the X3000 is the best action camera for the car, without doubt, without doubt. You know, the best overall picture and mic combination. Um, and it's something that a lot of a lot of tech YouTubers aren't talking about actually, because you know, there's a lot of tech YouTubers they only go for. GoPro or you know DJI, you know the new D DJI and things like that. But a lot of people forgot about this action camera. So what this video is is a little drive. It's a little drive with the X3000. I just basically come onto the motorway there. I live between Glasgow and Edinburgh. It's actually quite. It's not the most, not the most exciting place to live, but from a driving point of view, it's quite useful. I'm about five, five minutes or so, maybe a little bit six or seven minutes from the motorway. Once I'm on the motorway, I'm about 20 minutes from Glasgow and about 35, 40 minutes from Edinburgh. So it's pretty easy for me to go between the two biggest cities in Scotland. They're very close together. Um, it's much easier to get to Glasgow though. The motorway system is so much better going to Glasgow. Going to Edinburgh, two lanes, two lanes. Going into Glasgow, three lanes, sometimes four lanes. It's so much better. But going into Edinburgh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. So yes, um, one of the reasons I want to do this again, I talked about this in the video last week. I'm planning on doing a video uh, in my friend's car. We're gonna do some videos in the car. Um, and I wanted to know what this was going to be like. Now, I'm recording in 4K again, which is a little bit of a pain because it means that when you're processing the video and editing the video, your computer slows down. It's ridiculous, you know, you're, it's four times as much as a 1080p video, so it's like it, it struggles to, to play back, never mind edit. But it's probably worth it for that extra quality. Um, but I'm going to test 1080p as well another day. But the idea is that I would use this camera as the main camera, as the co camera that records audio. Just like right now, I don't have a lavalier mic, I don't have a shotgun mic, any kind of external microphone. I'm just using the microphone from the Sony X3000. Last time, and you know, in that video that I talked about last week with the three different action cameras, there was um, there was a lot of rattling, but I think that was coming from the mount. It should be secure right now. Hopefully, you don't hear any any rattling or anything. That looks quite secure there. Hopefully. Um, so yeah, that, this is a test to show you guys the Sony X3000. Uh, Let you guys see the footage, uh, see the quality. It's a little bit dull right now, so I don't know what it will be like um, quality-wise, but. Yeah, I'll let you guys see what the quality is like and let you see what the audio is like. And if I'm happy with it, which I think I will, then, you know, this is this is the action camera I'm going to use in the car. And, <clears throat> excuse me, my girlfriend's from Edinburgh, so I do go up to Edinburgh once or twice a week sometimes, at least once a week. Um, so I've got a long, boring 40-minute journey. So sometimes it would be good for me just grab this, put it into the... Suction cup, I, I did this action last time as well. S suck onto the windscreen and then just start recording. Um, and I think with my 128 gigabyte card with 4K, I can record two hours, 44 minutes. It's not too bad. So I've got, a, I've got the camera positioned in the passenger side, kind of facing me. You're probably seeing more of me in the car than you are of the road. Um, it's one of those things, I think if you put it right there, it's a little bit too close. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly where the best place is to put it. Um, 
But this is why I want to have two or three cameras. The idea is if I was recording with my friend, I'd have that one facing the air, GoPro facing the other way, and then the other camera could face it in the middle. But again, lots of tests. I need to see how it all works. This is all new to me. Um, okay, what do we here? The thing is, as I was saying there, see because this is two lanes, it's a pain in the ass because it, it kind of stalls the traffic a little bit because you've got a lot of cars, trucks, lorries and all that, all the kind of heavier vehicles, they go on the left hand side and then everyone slows down, so you don't have a lane for overtaking per se, you just have this additional lane, so everyone kind of bottlenecks here, but again it's not too bad, you know, like 40 minutes or so. Um, so one thing I want to talk about about this camera is, so this is a Sony X3000, in the UK at least, it, it still holds its value, it's like, you know, like 400 or so, more than that. I got it from, um, what do you call that? I got it from Hong Kong. Um, what was it? God, my, my mind has went blank. That website I use quite a lot um, from Hong Kong. Now this version is actually called the X3000R, and the R stands for, I believe, Live View Remote, or I think that's what it stands for, I think. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll let this guy get by, he's, he's right up my ass, as they say. So, the R stands for Live View Remote, I think that's what it refers to. And basically what it means that is that in the package, you also get this uh, Live View unit. Which is quite good because GoPro and most other action cameras, they charge you extra for, th for things like that. But the GoPro have got the smart remote, and for this, I've got, if I can show you, I've got this. You probably can't see that, but it's there, it's charging just now. Now the good thing about that is, it's just a little remote, it gives you a preview of what you're recording. So I was able to see at the start, okay, you know, this is what's getting in, in the shot. But I was also able to record, I, I was also able to format my micro SD card before I started recording. Um, but just the idea of having a, port, uh, or having a, a remote, if you've got the GoPro, I would advise getting the, the smart remote because the app is very problematic and in fact this is a problem with all action cameras when you connect your phone it, it's just a pain it just doesn't work well it's really sluggish you know the app always crashes you're bet, better getting a hardware remote so this the, the GoPro uh, smart remote doesn't have a preview this one does now I guess it's less of an issue with the GoPro because you've got the preview screen on the back you don't have this with the Sony but when you're in the car like, let this car pass. When you're in the car, the GoPro lets you see how much time is recording, it lets you see, you know, what's happening, but you can't see the actual footage, you can't see what's happening. And that's something where the Sony excels. But the idea of a remote is really good, and it's something I would advise, because if you're in the car, and you've got the camera over there, what normally happens, and what you normally have to do is set everything up and click record. And then what happens is, well, a lot of the time you don't want to actually record the footage immediately from your house, maybe you want to drive for a couple of miles or something, but if you've got an hour journey, you can't really stop and start it until you've stopped the vehicle because it's not safe to, obviously. But, so what you have to do is basically push uh, record at the start, record at the end and then edit it all. But if you have the remote, if you have this um, you know, smart remote or live view remote, what you can do is, if I can get by here, sitting behind a big lorry. Um, what you can do is just hit record when you want to record. So in this instance, I left my house and I waited like a couple of miles and then I pressed record and I said, hey guys, at the start of this video. Um, and the good thing is, if for example, say I'm going to Edinburgh right now, which I am, um, I can show you this footage and I can talk and things like that, but say I want to skip ahead, I don't have to record all the way into Edinburgh, I can push record and then I can push record again to stop recording, then wait 10 minutes, hit record again. So you can just kind of pick and choose when you start recording your clips. Sounds like such an easy thing to do, but when you're in your car yourself, or, or you're on a motorbike, or you're something like that, it just isn't practical to lean over and push record and change things. This is where a remote comes in very, very handy. That's good. That is good. Um, so, overall I think, um, you know, I still need to test this in lots of different situations, but overall I'm really happy with the Sony X3000. I think um, moving forward though, what my idea is, if I can do a few videos with my friend, um, 
or maybe even after this one, I want to evaluate the audio. But maybe in the future I would introduce an external microphone setup, as in the both of us both of us wear a lavalier mic and we make you know we improve the audio that way. It's one of those things though, you know, and, and this is a problem with YouTube, but this is a problem with getting good audio. Audio is arguably more important than video quality. You know, people can watch a video if, if, if the quality is bad in the video, if the audio is good, but they won't listen to bad audio. If, if the audio is poor, people will switch off. And I agree with that, you know, I know it's a general statement, but I do agree with that. And um, I do always try and get the best audio I can, but if you want to get better audio, well, what I'd actually have to have if me and a friend were recording with a lavalier mic, you'd have to have like a recording device in the middle, you'd have to get like some sort of uh, audio, I'm trying to think, like a Zoom or something like that, you know, I've got a Sony XT uh, SX2000, only does one person, I'd have to get a different one, and then it would record the audio se separately, and then you sync it in post. Now, all of that's good, it's not too difficult per se, but the problem with, uh, you know, this kind of thing is that when you want to improve audio and the audio starts getting recorded separately, you've got other things to kind of set up and test and, and, and you make sure everything's okay, make sure everything, is that working okay, okay that's working. Whereas with this Sony, if I just use the, the default mic and if I'm happy with the default mic, or rather if you guys are happy with the default microphone, um, I can just click record and go. And it's one of those things, sometimes, although audio is very, very important and I know how important it is, sometimes it is better to maybe sacrifice a little bit of audio or video quality if it makes your life easier, if it means that you don't have to spend a lot of time syncing things afterwards, doing a huge amount of editing or, or you know, just the initial setup as well because I've done it before, you know, I've done so many YouTube videos where I've set up, I've set up the audio and the audio's all perfect, I'm like, okay, I do a test and all that and then if something changes and then I forget to test it again and what should have been a video that took me five minutes to record ended up taking 35, 40 minutes to record and one little mistake in the audio means that you can't even use it so it's back to the drawing board. So where possible, I, I like to simplify things. So that's why right now, Sony X3000, 4K, default mic, that is what I'm recording with. But um, I, I am looking forward to doing more videos in the car. I, I like the idea of it, um, certainly because I want to do more videos in the car and about cars. One of the reasons I want to do this is I like cars, I like you know reading about cars and stuff like that, but I am a complete idiot with cars. I'm not good with my hands, I'm not a mechanic, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of how the engine works and all that. I'm, I'm like an average person, I, I know how to put the you know start stop with a car, I know how to drive a car and things like that, um, but beyond that I'm an idiot. Despite the fact I enjoy you know driving cars and, and you know reading about cars and stuff like that. But my friend Michael's the opposite. Michael is basically a mechanic. He's got, you know, two or three different cars. He's got two different Subarus just now. The one I wanted to go with is the one that he wants to sell, but then I want to show you his other one, which is even faster. The brake horse power in that is ridiculous. It's just a, a fleeing machine. It's just super, super fast. So I'd like to get, in, um, I'd like to do some videos with Michael about that. And I think, I think it's a, a good setup because I guess in some ways it's good having someone knowledgeable like Michael in the video and someone who's an idiot in the, in the video like me who knows nothing about cars um, because perhaps I'll ask the right questions, maybe a lot of questions that you know maybe other people wouldn't ask or they'd be scared to ask and all that, I'll just blurt out my idiotic questions. Um, so where am I? Where am I? I am, I'm, I'm about 16 miles or so from Edinburgh now. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is use the little remote that I was talking about. I'm going to stop recording and when I start recording again, I will be at the outskirts of Edinburgh um, because basically from here into Edinburgh, it's not a lot happening to be honest, it's just, well it's not a lot happening the whole journey into Edinburgh until, until you hit Edinburgh, it's just this, two lanes, another two lanes and trees. Very pretty but not the most interesting. So let's jump ahead. So I'm just coming up to the big roundabout. It's kind of like for the city bypass for Edinburgh and then I can turn into the city centre. Um, I'm always unsure about which. I think it's this lane. Might have to just do a little manoeuvre if I don't get the right one. Um, 
when I was driving there, I was driving there for about 10, 15 minutes or so there, um, and I had a little bit of a brainstorm. Basically, it's not the biggest of brainstorms, if I'm admittedly, um, but I put my phone up, I took my phone out of my pocket and I put it here. I'm a big fan of these magnetic um, oh, attachments for your vents in your car. They work really well. Um, saves you having to, you know, put it in as a grip and all that. Um, in fact, I'm going to pay attention to this just now because I, get, I want to get the right lane. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk and then get the wrong lane. There's a very high chance it'll do that. Right. Yeah, okay here. Oh, I think I'm in the right lane-ish. Now I'll move over to this one. Here we go. Um, yeah, so I was looking at my phone, I'm like, okay, why don't I just buy another one of those? Basically, this uh, preview remote, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, if you push the record button there, it just brings it up again. So it brings you up the, the video again so you can see how you're recording. You push it again, it will stop recording. But the back of the panel, it's just, it's just a black piece of case. So what I can do is buy one of those attachments, the sticky side for the magnet put it to the back of it and then just strap it here, which means I can keep it charged when I'm recording. So it's quite a, quite a practical solution, very easy one as well. I'm all, I'm, all for, um, I'm all for DIY solutions when, you know, when you have to do them, when you need to do something, but if there's a solution out there already, why not just use it? And yeah, that's an easy fix. Get one of those magnetic stickers on the back of it, one of the magnetic pads, and then just put it onto your vent. And when I'm driving, I can see exactly what the shot's like. I can click record, I can stop recording. Very good setup, if I do say so myself. So this is the outskirts of Edinburgh. I think, um, I, I would say that I'm still a Glasgow guy. You know, I went to university in Glasgow twice. I worked in Glasgow for years. I lived and worked in Edinburgh for a year, 2000 to 2003 um, and a lot of tourists who come to Scotland say that Edinburgh is the nicer city and I, I can see why people say that Edinburgh is an absolute beautiful city you know you've got the castle in the middle you've got a lot of kind of lovely little parks and nice areas as well and it's just a nice place to walk around you know I, I, I always say I'm a Glasgow guy as far as you know going out and that's just where I've spent more time and I've always thought it was more fun in Glasgow um, but Edinburgh is a really good city. Um, I, I definitely think it's one of the nicest cities in Europe. Past, I don't know. Okay, I'm a little bit biased, of course. I'm a little bit biased because I am Scottish, but it is a beautiful city. The city right now, though, is absolutely crazy because of the Fringe. So it's the, one of the biggest festivals in the world. And it runs for a month and everywhere is a bit busy right now. Um, which isn't good for me because I am not the best at reverse parking sometimes um, because I don't have to do it where I live, you know, I've got my own parking spot in my house but also where I'll have to park, the street's very busy, there's hardly any uh, parking spaces I've also found it as well in Edinburgh, see whenever I did have to come up here and I had to reverse park into a spot you go up and you drive up and then you reverse back in but when you go forward someone just goes right up, your, right up behind you and then you can't actually do anything you have to just drive on very annoying um, but that's kind of a bigger problem in this car I'm driving a BMW 520d and driving wise when you're actually driving it it doesn't feel like a big car you know this doesn't feel like a big car just now when I'm driving it's not like it's you know you've, you've it's got a, big, a bigger uh, turning circle but it doesn't feel like a big car but when you go and park yeah you're reminded that this is a big car because if I park in a regular parking space, I always hang out by about a foot or two over the end. It's, you know, the car's just bigger than parking spaces. So whenever you have to reverse park into a space, sometimes the spaces that are available are not the biggest. People go over the lines, etc. So reverse parking in this is sometimes a pain. But I'll see how it goes. I'll see how it goes. I'm not exactly going to show off the quality of this camera in this video, am I? Look at this, the sky is grey. Over the last month, basically in Scotland, it has been a paradise for weeds. Because what has happened is it's like a couple of days of beautiful weather, beautiful sunshine, and then 
and then it rains for a couple of days. So it's really nice for a few days and then it's raining. So the weeds have been growing at a ridiculous level. I actually cleared my monoblock, I, I power washed the whole monoblock, did the, the sand, did everything, and within a few days the weeds were like that. I had to you know, put salt down and all that. So yeah, this is what we've been dealing with in Scotland. It, it's really nice for a few days and then it rains and it's horrible and then it's nice. Um, it's a little bit crazy. I went running last, last night for the first time in a week and I was out running, I had to take my jacket off, it was so warm and then, you know, like 10 minutes afterwards it was, it was pouring down. It's just, pff, welcome to Scotland. So, um, okay, so we're driving into Edinburgh now. Um, as someone who's kind of, I'm not out in the sticks, but it's a little bit different driving in the city centre. Obviously there's a lot of one-way streets, I, I rely on the sat-nav sometimes for different things. But um, coming into Edinburgh as well, there's there's a lot of bus lanes, there's cycle lanes, there's a lot of other things that kind of throw you off. Motorbike guy. Um, so yeah, there's always a, a few different kind of obstacles to kind of throw you off. But the other thing as well, and you know, this is something you experience in any, any big city as well. Um, like if you go to London, etc., everyone's always in a rush. Edinburgh isn't that bad, but I know that from a driving point of view, you know, where I live, if someone's driving up and they can't get out, etc., you just flash them on you go, you can go, you can get in. But it's, it's kind of more dog eat dog when you're driving in Edinburgh. Everyone, you know, everyone's kind of focused on driving, no one lets you in. Um, yeah, so not all the time, of course, some people do, but I think that's maybe, I think that's probably true in most cities in the UK or any city in the world is that more people are in a rush. You know, people don't want to let people in because they're in such a rush to get to where they want to go. Whereas outside of the city, it's maybe a little bit more chilled and people will say when you go, you can go and things like that. Um, but it took a while for me to get used to that, you know, because everyone's just fighting to get into a lane. Okay, I'm going left here. I actually do know the way to go here, but I always stick on the sat-nav because every so often there's like roadworks. So, you know, keep it, keeping, the, keeping that on. Keeping the sat-nav on helps me. I'm going to preview this. Ah, oh, it's okay. See, I'm looking at the preview. My smart remote. Um, I'm not sure how much you guys will actually see. Nah, you're not going to see. This is why I need to set up a second camera. Ideally, what I'd like is when I'm driving, you can see more of what I'm driving around. Um, as far as, you know, the environment, etc. Yeah, I mean, another way to do that just be set up a camera here so that it faces um, what I'm facing, so you can see what I'm seeing. That's maybe how I'll set it up with my friend. Come on. All these filter lanes. I know that manuals can be more fun, but see, be honest, when you're driving in a place like this where it's constantly traffic lights, automatics are the business. I've, I've seen all those debates online, you know, Americans can't use a manual and all that kind of thing. And I know that's true for a lot of people, but I actually think they're right on this one, you know. Automatics saves so much hassle. Don't get me wrong, you know, I've, I've drove manuals most of my life. That's kind of what I'm used to driving, but when you're doing a lot of driving and you're stopping, starting, you're on the, the motorway and things like that, it's just so much easier. It's, it's like driving a go-kart, you just you click go, basically, you know, put it into drive. Hit the accelerator. That's it. You know, a kid could do it. I think especially if you're doing a lot of driving, it, it comes into its own. Okay. So, I'm going to left lane here. So, we're kind of getting towards the side. So, basically, the way... You'll probably see this as well when I'm driving, but it kind of bends around. There's like a little road bypass thing that takes you right into the heart of the city. Um, we'll see how it goes. All oh, these traffic lights, I don't know how people get used to this. It drives me nuts. Busy little place, so. As always, guys, when, when I do a video like this, I know I'm kind of going off in tangents and just talking, you know, randomly about different subjects, but... You know, again, as I said, one of the things that I want to do in this video is let you and let me and everyone else see 
the quality of this action camera and the quality of the microphones. Um, what I found last week with the, the comparison video, the GoPro, the audio was terrible just about all the time. It always sounded kind of muffled. So the best audio was between the Sonys and I found that in certain clips I found the Sony X1000 V was a little bit better and then the X3000 I thought it sounded better but I don't know if that's a preference thing as well. I know Evo was saying that about the X1000 V being a little bit better. Um, I don't know if there's any other, you know again this is something else I'll need to test. There's maybe some settings I can mess around with to change the audio, to change how it works etc. Okay, so this is like the little bypass part, so no traffic lights at this point. This cuts all the way to Lothian Road in Edinburgh, which is basically just underneath the castle. So we're basically just winding our way past a lot of roads. It saves a lot of time, you know, the, way, the di direction I'm going. Um, it's a shame I didn't set up my other GoPro. I should have did that, actually. I, like th This is what I'll do the next time. I'll get another camera set up to face that way so that you guys can see what I see as well. It's hard, I've been looking at this myself actually, you know, I've been looking at other YouTubers and other videos and even like, you know, like Carpool with Robert Lowen or um, Jerry Seinfeld's um, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, just looking at the positions that they're putting in action cameras, We're looking at the position that they're, they're placing the camera to see what the best angle is. But it's just like anything, you know, when you do YouTube videos and all this, people always say you should do it this way, you should do it that way, but really what you should do all the time is just go out there and mess around, do a few different positions, test things, test the audio, test the video and see what works. Hence this video, which is why I'm here. I don't even know what this bypass kind of road is called, there, there obviously is a name for it, but I don't know it. Okay, okay, okay. It's a big cinema and different things up there. I'm not sure, will you see that in the shot? I don't think so. No, you won't. You won't. But I am coming into the heart of Edinburgh. And it's going to be busy because of the festival. The traffic hasn't been too bad though, as you've seen. It's, it, I mean, it's standard for a city, but it hasn't been too bad. During rush hour, Edinburgh is an absolute nightmare to, can, to come in and out of. Um, it just it just backs up towards where I live. It's just you know you get caught in it, and it's you know stick another thirty minutes onto your journey. It's a pain, but not an issue for me. I work from home. I can plan when I go. I'm not I'm not dependent on arriving or going at a certain time generally, so it's not too bad. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I think when I'm doing this video and in my next few videos, I think I'll get, they'll get better in that, as I said, I'm doing a lot of testing just now. I'm, I'm trying to see what the best camera position is. I'm trying to see, you know, where I should put the cameras, whether I need a second camera all the time, whether it's worth it, whether it's not, whether I need to change the audio and things like that. So, um, yeah, you know, that's what these videos are, are for really, just for me to test things. We're outside the Sheraton Grand. And Lothian Road. I learned the hard so basically where I am just now, you go to the end and there's two lanes and I learned the hard way to go into the right lane because you go into the left lane and you go around the corner and someone Well, you can't plan that. I was right in the middle there. That was a really awkward position there. <laughs> um, yeah, I found that when you go around the other lane, there's always cars parked, so you end up having to stop and then jump back into the right lane. These are things that your sat nav obviously don't tell you. So, I mean, L Lothian Road, up to the left there is the castle. This is quite a busy part of the city. Um, and, um, yeah, this, you know, I'm, I'm only about five minutes away from where I'm going, so... Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, um, I know I've been doing a lot of rambling but hope you've, hopefully you've enjoyed it, hopefully the quality is good, it should be, been recording at 4K at 30 frames per second, um, 
Let's see what this guy does, actually. Yeah, he's going to sneak ahead of me. He's a taxi driver. No, is he parking? Yeah, he's... Go in. On you go, mate. Oh, he's, oh, he's parked. I thought it was just... I thought he was indicating right. Actually, there's hazards on. This is another thing you need to deal with. Is say, like, taxis will go right in front of you. Um, this happened one of the first times I come up here. The taxi will come right in front of you and then just park. And you're like, I, I, I can't move. I can't move. Um, so... This actually, let me see, does this tell me the time? This says I've been recording 15 minutes, so 16 minutes for this clip. That's not too bad. Um, so guys, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Again, as I've said many times, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Let me know if you like this style of video. Let me know if, you know, the quality of the footage is good. Let me know if the audio is good. Let me know if you enjoyed the, the fire engine driving by there and making lots of noise. Um, but I do appreciate your continued support guys, I appreciate you all subscribing, watching the videos, liking, sharing, commenting, sending your love and all that. Oh, I'm getting very cheesy now. But um, thanks for watching guys, I do appreciate it and I will speak to you all in the next one. Take care guys.